This is the review assignment of Appendix A. We begin by opening a file called Assessor and then do a Save As and name it as Owners. Complete the documentation sheet and then go to the Owners Worksheet. In the Owners Worksheet, the first thing that we're asked to do is to create an Excel table for this information. Now you can highlight it, but it's a lot easier if you just press Control A. That's a quick way to highlight. And then you go to Insert Table. Verify that yes, my table has headers. Press Enter. And now we have our table format. They ask us to apply the Medium 10 style. Under the Table Tools Design button, you'll find the Table Styles and the Medium 10 is probably this one. Okay, we'll go ahead and select that. We're asked in Step 4 to use the Text to Columns command to split the owner's name into two columns called Last Name and First Name. So what you want to do is you want to insert a blank column to the right of the column B. Highlight column B, or the information in column B, and then use your Data Text to Columns command. This is a delimited file because the comma and the space separate the last name. And so we're going to say yes, it's a comma and a space that separates those. That way it gets rid of both of them. And then there's no special formatting or anything to worry about, so we'll just click Finish. And then if I scroll to the top, you'll see how it has been split into two columns. So this is the last name, and this is the first name. In cell I1, they ask you to put the heading Status, and then to use a combination of the IF and LEFT functions to display the word Discard if the address is a P.O. box. So you can see right over here in the address bar that some of these are P.O. boxes. And if it says P.O. box, then we're going to choose Discard. We're going to say Discard in this cell. So that would be equal if, and then we're going to begin with the left command, looking at the leftmost edge of the cell. So we want to look at the left of cell, in this case, D2, and we want to choose six characters, because that's how, much, how many characters are in P.O. box. So if the left portion of D2, the first six characters, is equal to post office box, then we want to place the word discard in this cell. Otherwise, we won't do anything. So take a moment to analyze that formula. And then when we press Enter, you'll notice that only the addresses that contain P.O. box do we see the word discard. In J1, we enter the column header town. And in J2, we enter a formula to convert the data in the town column to proper case. So that's just equal proper, which is going to switch it to initial caps. And then the town would be an E2. And when we press Enter, it changes that to proper case. And I'll go ahead and widen that column a little bit. So you examine the function equal proper E3. In cell K2, we enter the heading state. And then we use the upper to change the existing state in column F to uppercase. So that would be equal upper, and that's in F2. So equal upper F2. And then when we press enter, that copies down. In column L, row 1, we're asked to put the heading town state. And in this column, starting with row 2, we will combine the town and the state data from columns J and K into one column using the uh, concatenation or the ampersand symbol. So here's what that would look like. Equal J2, that's our town, ampersand combines or strings together, and in double quotes, we have a comma and a space. So that's going to give us the town comma space. And then the other ampersand strings together the two-letter state code, or K2. Let's press Enter. And you can see that that copied down. And I'll widen my column a little bit there. And so there we have our town comma space and our two-letter state code. In step 9, they ask us to deal with the Social Security number 
that is in column A, I think. Yeah, let's go over to column A. A quick way to select a column is just to click on the column heading, and they want us to apply a Social Security number format. Well, there's one of those already built in. So if we go to the Home tab, and then we use the More button here for our formatting, under Special, you'll find that there is a Social Security number format. And so I'm going to go ahead and apply that, and then I'll click away so you can see that all of the Social Security numbers have hyphens in the appropriate places. Be sure to save your file. This is the end of the video.